G'day folks, this afternoon I'm going on a proper cray fishing trip and I am excited. I'm also quite a bit wound up. I need this cray fishing trip to unwind me and settle me down a bit. I'll tell you why I'm wound up shortly, but for now let's just get the nets in. Hey you! You're watching Robbie Fishing. Now here's my bait for today. I've got, I'm, got, I'm using five nets. I've got five stockings filled with dry dog food. In this one and this one I've got Lucky Dog. And in these three I've got Good O's. The bag of Good O's is coming to an end so I went to the supermarket to buy more and I didn't have any so I bought some Lucky Dog that's about half the price of the Good O's I know Good O's is a very good cray bait and my dog Jaffa loves Good O's well Jaffa also loves the Lucky Dog I found out it's half the price but she really likes that as well but let's hope the crayfish like the Lucky Dog as much as they like the Good O's well, here we go with net number one it's good to be out on a, a proper cray fishing trip and not just a little two hour micro adventure net number two He's upside down. Bucker. Net number two. Beauty. Right, net number three is just downstream a little bit. Right, net number four. Can go way out there. And net number five can go way out there. Right, now why was I so wound up? I said was because I'm already starting to simmer. This is the first proper cray fishing session I've been able to go out on this season. The first two were both two hour sessions thanks to the Victorian COVID rules. I'm happy with that. I was just thankful to be able to go out. That's not the problem. Today was the first day that I'm allowed to go out all day. But I had to take my dog Jaffa to the vet at 10.30. That's fine. I live about five minutes from the vet. So I thought I'll leave at 20 past 10. That'll get me there with a few minutes to spare. No worries at all. So I grabbed Jaffa. I put her on the leash. I grabbed my wallet, my asthma spray, my phone. Walked out to the car. Went to open the back door of the car to let Jaffa in. Car's locked. Where are the keys? On the bench. House is locked. Every window's locked. I couldn't get in. I fully locked myself out. I rang the vet. I said, I'm going to be late. I had to call in some support. It was after 11 o'clock before I got to the vet. So I was already half an hour late. I was already a little bit wound up, thanks to my own stupidity. I go to the vet, get it all done, get home. I ended up leaving about quarter past 11. Get down to the service station, you know, 20 past 11. Pull up at the Bowser. No wallet. Forgot my wallet. Had to drive all the way home to get my wallet. By this stage, I'm getting really wound up. Go all the way home, get my wallet, go all the way back to the service station. And then coming out of Wangrata was no different to any other day in Wangrata where I was just stuck behind people doing 40 kilometers an hour everywhere. <laughs> but that's why I was wound up. So many hurdles, so many delays all through my own stupidity. But folks, I'm here now, I'm starting to unwind and I can't wait to check these nets. And I've got a funny feeling it won't be all that long until I start. Right, folks, it's time for the impatient check. Now, it took about 15 minutes to get them all in. And it was only five minutes ago that I put those last two in. So these ones have had about 20 minutes, and the other one down there is at about a quarter of an hour. So I'll check these three, but I'll leave them two until I go around them again later. So I'll impatient check the first three. <laughs> Very slippery here, so I've got to be a bit careful. It's a monster in here, I can just feel it. No, a monstrous bit of bait. <laughs> That's what you get for being impatient, Robert. Right, I oh jeez, I fell in. This doesn't feel heavy at all. If there's one in here, it's bloody small. Right. Now I don't want to catch those gum leaves. Okay, impatient check number three. Doesn't feel very heavy. Right. The impatient check didn't deliver. Sometimes it does. But this time it didn't. I reckon that's going to be tangled, but anyway, we'll give it a crack. Right, it's time to check them again. It's been about 30 to 40 minutes since I checked these ones, my impatient check. So by the time I check these two and the one down there, those other two up there will have been in for close to an hour. So they've all had more than long enough to catch some crayfish. All right, what's the first net got? Nothing. I'll leave that out. I'll right, take the second one. Then I'll throw them back in together. I'll throw them back in together. Doesn't feel very heavy either. Huh. It's a bit disappointing. I'll catch more when I just go out for a couple of hours. Alright, now this one had nothing in it earlier as well. But I have caught crazy in this spot in the past. And some big ones too, I must add. Yes, look at that, I've got the double. I've got the double. 
Now, if that's got no eggs, it'll be a legal cray. Might even be too big. That's a very big crayfish, that one. Now, face it at that. Right. Let's go. Ow. Let's get them out of the net for a bit of an investigation as to whether they've got any eggs under their tail. It's this one. Yep. Look at that. She's got about 10 eggs. She's got eggs. Not very many, but she's got eggs. And even though she's not heavily in berry, she's still protected. That's a good thing. Now, Matt Thurling, if you're watching, be excited. That is the tape measure that was given to me by Matt Thurling and his sons last year. 10 centimetres. Look at that, right on. There's the minimum size. Yep, over the minimum. Under the maximum. That is a legal cray, but protected by the fact that she's got eggs. All right, Jenny. I've said it before, but a female crayfish is called a Jenny. See you later, Jenny. Now where's this other one? This one will be undersized. This one's in a hell of a mess. Got no eggs. Oh, she's already gone. Took me eye for one second and she was gone. Reminds me of my first wife a bit. Right. That didn't take long. Beautiful clean cray, no eggs. Minimum is 10. And that's probably about eight and a half, nine. Undersize. Matt Thurling and his sons gave me this New South Wales tape measure last year, complete with a little lanyard, a little carabiner clip. But do you think I ever remember to bring it out? Thanks, Mr. Carpet. Thank you, Matt, and thank you to your beautiful boys. And thank you, Mr. Beautiful Crayfish, for coming along. Right, I'm on the board. I am on the board. Right, now these two nets have been in the longest. I reckon they're going to catch crayfish, but the problem is I don't know how I'm going to go getting them out without getting them snagged. There is a heap of snags just in front of the nets here somewhere. And being that these ones are thrown out off, off a sandbar and not being lifted vertical, I've got great fears, but if I can get them in, I reckon I'll catch craze here. So far, I'm getting it in fine. Doesn't feel very heavy. That's okay. Because I know that I can get it in and out there fine. That's the main thing. This feels heavy. It feels snagged. That's why I knew that was going to happen. It shows me first casualty for the season, I think. Jesus. I don't know how I'm going to get that off. It's the problem with using thick string. I've got it wrapped around my shirt. I'll put this other one back. And I'll have to find out a way to try and get that out. I'm puffed. Check this out. My GoPro's in the car. I went and got a jacket on so I could wrap my hand up in some sleeves. And I've got it out. I actually got it out. It's pretty well damaged. It's got a lot of mud in it. But I got it out. There you go. Whew. I might be able to repair that. Oh, sorry if I sound puffed, but that took a lot of work. I'll be able to repair that somehow. I've got one like that at home. I've just put that back around here and then tied it up with cable ties. I don't think I've got any tools in the car to repair it, so I might be down to four nets. But I've got a spare bait for the other nets, and I'll take it home and repair it and turn it into a spare. All is not lost. Did I mention how puffed out I am? It took a lot of work to get that out. I thought I was going to have to tie it to the tow ball of the car and drive off at one stage. <laughs> right, check this out. Good news. This is the net that I just snagged. The string that was tying my dog food bait in. I've used that to attach the uh, broken ends here, in between the rubber. There's bits of like plastic and rubber on the ends there and I've tied it in between them so they can't slip out. 
this will work fine provided I don't get snagged. If I get snagged, I think that will become a weak spot. But anyway, I'm back to five nets. That's like a wing. It's half a bird. It's a bit strange. A bit of natural bait. Natural burly. Right, time to check them again. These one, these two here have been in about 45 minutes. The third one up the end here, not so long, probably about 25, because that was the one that was snagged up around the corner. Had to unsnag it, untangle it, mend it, move it. <laughs> anyway, let's go. What have we got? This one hasn't caught a cray yet today, and it still hasn't. Something's been chewing on it though. Look, something's broken through the stocking. It's had a visitor. It has had a visitor to the net. Might have been a turtle, who knows? But it has had something in the net. Wow, this particular spot here is just not producing today, is it? I'll check them all before I uh, throw them back in and make splashes. And this one hasn't been in as long. If this gets snagged, it'll probably break, I reckon. Doesn't feel very heavy. No, yeah, this spot's, uh, as Brett would say, no bingo. This is the productive net that had two crazy in it before. How does it feel? Feels heavy. It might be one in it. My guess is one. <laughs> I was on the money. This is, look at him, he's cuddling it. You're cuddling that, mate. You like it that much, it's uh, you need to give it a cuddle. Come on, let go. Normally, if you turn the net upside down, that's when they usually let go. Let go. He's gonna let go. Any second now. Oh my god. No, just grab it again. Let go. He really likes this net. If I grab his left claw, maybe he'll try and nip me with his right claw. You'll have to let go. There we go. His right claw is a bit bigger than his left claw. Right. The right claw is bigger than the left claw. That's clearly undersized. I'm guessing around about 80, maybe a bit smaller even. No eggs. See you later, mate. My right, last net. Now this wasn't snagged. It had a nice, clear, uh, safe passage, as they call it. <laughs> I reckon I'm going to catch a cray in this net today, even if it's this pool or another pool. Actually, I reckon there's something in here now. I reckon it just might be one here. It just feels a little bit heavy. No, I was wrong. Righto, here we go. I can't believe I haven't caught a crayfish off this bank. I've caught heaps off this bank over the years. I've got a number of videos on my channel where I've caught crays off this bank. But for today, today, for some reason today, nothing. Right, let's check the first three. Can I catch a cray off this bank? Yeah, whoa! Have I caught a cray off the bank? Look at the size of that! That is absolutely massive. <laughs> that is absolutely, it'll be full of eggs, no doubt. Yes, look at that. That is huge. That is an enormous crayfish. Let's put the, the 12 centimeter. Oh, look, that's, that's probably a 130. That is probably a 130, 130, 130 millimetre. Definitely the biggest cray that I've caught this season. <laughs> that is huge. I wonder if I can get a photo with it without it biting my ear off. Oh, you dare nip my ear. That is absolutely enormous. Let's note the left claw, he's, he's missing half of the, the, uh, the claw there. Right, she's got eggs, not loaded with eggs, but she's got quite a few under there, and that's wonderful. See you later. Wow, that is absolutely enormous.
I was just saying, it's a wonder I haven't caught a crow. I thought it felt a bit heavy, but I'm too scared to make the call because I keep making myself look stupid every time I say it feels heavy. That's still nothing in this one. God, they're beautiful things. Big prehistoric things. I absolutely love these things. I really do. Nothing. Still only one cray in this spot. But anyway, it might have only been one, but it was one big one. Right, I super net. This has caught a two, then a one. This has caught, I've caught four crays today, and three of them have come out of this net. Didn't feel all that heavy this time though. No, but we've got a, uh, a donut, a zero. That's okay. That's okay. cray. Oh, it feels heavy this time though. I reckon there could be something in it this time. So that last time and there wasn't. <laughs> Must be a heavy net this one, because I say it every time. I've got a pet horse named Mayo, and sometimes Mayo knows. Right, Ugh. doesn't feel very heavy. Disappointing this bank. This bank normally, uh, normally really productive. It's not today. Look out, I've got one. <laughs> not a monster. He's an undersizer, I'm pretty sure. That I'll check. Don't rip me stocking, mate. I need to put them on my legs later when I go out. Alright. Here's the minimum. He is about half a centimetre under. Probably, I'm guessing 92 to 93. Oh, that's number five. Slowly but surely ticking over. Right. What about the wounded net? I want to catch one in the wounded net just because I thought I was going to lose this net and I was going to ride it off. I want to catch one in it so that I know it's still useful. Doesn't feel particularly heavy now though. No. <laughs> This isn't the last time I check the nets today, but it might be the last time I check them without a jumper on because the temperature is dropping like a stone. Huh, no more. What about this? Oh, snag then. But it's off, thank God. What about this time? No. Nah. <laughs> right, time to check them again. I'm checking them a bit earlier. They haven't had an hour this time. They've had about 40 minutes, and that's because I'm going to put them back and cray into the night. I'm going to come and check them again when it's dark with a torch. So I thought I'd check them now so that there's not so much dark footage while well, there's still a little bit of light, if that makes sense. Ugh. Could be one in here. There's not. <laughs> right, I'll call it now before I pull it. Yep, that's heavy. There's something in here. That way, if there's nothing in there, I've got an excuse. That nah, doesn't feel very heavy. Right. Nope. Quite right there. Because I'm crayfishing fishing into the dark, I just got my torch out to have a play with it. I swallowed my torch. It was just a light snack. My whole face lit up. Right. Started good. Hasn't done much since. Still hasn't done much. Rightio net number five, it's up to you to make sure that this round isn't a crayfishless round Which I think it's going to be Because it doesn't feel any heavier than any other time Oh, well, none that check I see something really cool the, the new rope that I bought for some of my crane nets the other day is reflective it's got reflective stuff in it check this out there's one net there you can't see much go over to the other net and look at the rope there's the rope for the net <laughs> it's, it's a reflective rope right folks the time has come for the final check of the nets I'm gonna have, uh, take the nets out now so hopefully they've had the longest time it's nearly seven o'clock they've been in for about an hour and 20 minutes all right, they've had a super soak. <laughs> Still nothing in that one. Nothing in that one either. <laughs> a 
nothing in the wounded net either. <laughs> nothing. Wow. No. Absolutely nothing. Can you believe that? That has not been touched. Oh, I caught a heap of. I caught a heap of crayfish in this spot last year, and this time today, nothing. Unbelievable. Well, folks, I've had an absolute blast. As far as catching crayfish goes, it hasn't been overly successful. I've caught five. It's taken me six and a half hours to catch them. That's not even one crayfish an hour. So it's been pretty slow, but I've had a blast, and I've got to catch that absolute monster. It's just been awesome, and I've unwound. I was wound up when I got here. I'm certainly relaxed now. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, want to give me a big fat thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, and hopefully I'll see you in my next video.